How's it going everybody? Sean here with Lucid and today we're going to talk about image formats. Some of you have probably finished working on a graphic design or edit and notice when you save your work there are a large number of file types associated with images. It can definitely be confusing and how do you know you're making the right choice for your situation? This video will hopefully shed some light on the matter and give you a better understanding of the formats in which you're working with. There are so many specialized file types that you'll most likely never use that I'm going to focus on the ones that you'll interact with most. First off, digital images are going to fall under two categories, raster or vector. Raster images are composed of pixels. Most of you are familiar with pixels, and as you might have guessed, the photos you take with your camera are raster images. It could also be something very simple like an illustration in a basic paint software. Raster images should most often be used as the final product, being that they contain a fixed number of pixels and resizing the image will result in a loss of quality. Now vector images aren't really images at all. They consist of mathematical formulas that can be changed without penalty. Because of this, you won't suffer any quality loss. For this reason, vectors are widely used during the creative process and then converted to a raster image when ready for distribution. Now that you have a better understanding of the raster and vector file formats, Let's continue on to the specific file types that fall into those categories. Starting with the more common raster files and the most recognized file type of them all, the JPEG. JPEG is a file format that uses lossy compression. This reduces the file size, but the quality of the image suffers. You'll primarily want to use this type of file for web applications and avoid it for print or creative processes. Next up is the GIF, and don't get caught up with the pronunciation of this. GIFs, like JPEGs, are primarily used for web applications. They are also commonly used to create animated images, and GIFs can have transparency as well, which in design is oftentimes essential. Next we have the PNG file. These can include transparencies as well, and are capable of higher quality images than JPEGs and GIFs, but of course this comes at a higher cost in file size. So it's important to use PNG files sparingly for web applications, as it could increase loading times. And now to the TIFF format. TIFF is a lossless file format, and this means no quality is lost when the file is saved. TIFFs can also support layers, and they're a great format for print-ready projects. But because the files are so large, they're basically never used in web applications. And finally we have the PSD, which is the native format for Adobe Photoshop. This format is ideal for printing and sending to graphic designers. Now we'll move on to the vector formats. EPS is a standard when dealing with vector files and this is a must-use format for any design element that may need to be resized. EPS format is suitable for printing, but should be converted to a raster file for web application. Next we have AI files, which are Adobe Illustrator's native vector format. Whenever we're working on a project in Illustrator, you're working with an AI file. Before we finish, I want to discuss one more key format, Adobe's PDF. This is great for both digital and print distribution. It's a file format that allows you to deliver to the printer your client, or even your viewers. And the best part is, PDF files can contain raster and or vector images. And oftentimes, you'll use a PDF to show someone what a final design might look like. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you, and we'll see you guys next time.